Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about next generation space suit that contract has been awarded from NASA. So let's dive right into it. Now, why exactly that is happening? Because most of you are aware of like NASA is dealing with a lot of spacesuit problem. So we have to understand what's the core reason behind it. Well, NASA is literally running out of spacesuit, meaning the suit that you see, there is only 12 piece of it left. And um, you have to understand in Apollo era, every suit was built for every single astronaut. Now that was a wartime project, meaning they had GG amounts of money around like around three to 4.5% of the GDP kind of money or national budget. So. They were going YOLO, but after that, once they, uh, you know, wanted to build ISS space shuttle, they realized that sort of uh, manufacturing approach is flat out not approachable. So they had to create a modular approach where multiple people can be accommodated with few suits. So that was done. It did work. It was safe. It was awesome. It had supposed to have 15 years of lifespan. So it was done, built. Everything is awesome. Here's the deal. That 50 year, uh, 15 years passed long ago, meaning right now all these equipments are touching 40 years. Let that sink in. They're supposed to be designed for 15 year lifespan. They are at 40 years and means they are the physical hardware that has been running for 40 years. Of course, they have been refurbished uh, to all, uh, you know, every part, but uh, you get that point. The design itself is breaking down. The core architecture itself is wearing down. And at this point in time, it's not safe. What does it mean it's not safe? Meaning uh, this sort of water leakage incidents happened. Now, this is a helmet from that earlier water leakage instrument. And it was very deadly. Meaning we were very lucky that we did not lose an astronaut because of it. Because you have to understand in gravity, if your suit leaks, water pools in the bottom. So that gives you enough time until you get fully flooded. You have time to get, you know, get help. Here's still in zero gravity, it creates creeps along your skin, meaning uh, water starts to leak here, it will start to creep under. And this happened, like this is a real event, that, that's the photo I'm showing you. It happened and it started to cover the eyes and it was very close to even nose. And now astronauts are very well trained professionals, so they tried their best to remain calm and he was very lucky, very well behaved and he like, you know, uh, dealt with the problem step by step and he was rescued in time. That was step one and they started to freak out. This is not okay, this is not acceptable and it happened again. So you get that point, like these suits are well past their, you know, uh, service life. So blaming the suit at this point in time is like stupid. It's like, dude, best before, we crossed best before 15 years ago. So come on, bro, you can't blame the suit. On top of that, this suit was like Mark II, uh, Apollo was Mark One. This was Mark Two. So, what's the reality behind it? Reality behind it is like it was good when the, the this was like supposed to be test bed. This supposed to be like teach you how to build better space suit. But they started to use this. Now, this suit is very uh, painful for the astronauts. Now, at that time, nobody knew how to build good, comfortable suits. So this was like, this is all they had. But reality is in long-term uses, it started to fatigue the astronauts, meaning it's almost like how I, you know, ha hurted my uh, disc uh, on spine disc because of, you know, improper posture, not proper seats, same thing. So it's like almost shoulder area, it gets destroyed in this suit. So it's not healthy for astronauts. So A, it's not safe, B, it's not healthy. So you have to understand like NASA must be aware of this, you know, and they were. They spent $1 billion to create replacement of this puppy, which A, way over budget, B, way behind schedule, and it will not be ready in time. Flat out, it will not be ready for Artemis or even re replacement of because right now, the second uh, water incident caused a red alert. And at this point in time, you should not go out into space using this suit unless it's absolutely critical. So that is something very significant and serious. They will try to, you know, uh, get more life out of this. But at this point, people are like, dude, that's optimistic saying, because again, it was very awesomely built. It did survive for this long, but there is a point where after which it's like, you, dude, you are just like, you know, putting makeup on a pig. So NASA have learned the hard way that they're really not good with budgets. So how do they solve it? Public private partnership. Now, thankfully, NASA have gained some amazing experience, lot of real world good empirical data where their commercial resupply services and commercial crew program both have yielded amazing fruits. Meaning in commercial resupply services, they already created multiple space companies. One of them you may have heard of known as SpaceX. So uh, that was very successful. And on top of that commercial crew program, which is almost uh, about to bear its full fruit, meaning they have one vehicle and second vehicle is also complete. And this is very very uh, important for NASA. NASA have learned the hard way. They shall never ever have one point of failure. Meaning if SpaceX goes down, they did. That should not happen. That's why they are pouring boatload of money, effort and elbow grease into uh, Starliner also. And it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'm just, I hope Boeing, you know, should not have merged with a uh, magnet dollars. They merged with another company and their upper, uh, you know, uh, basically upper management went to YOLO, branded. 
and literally Boeing started to crash because of that, right? Before that, Boeing used to crash, but it was like, you know, maintenance error and all that. Airlines were responsible. This is the first time Boeing started to, you know, do stupid things. So things happen. And that's another lesson because uh, when this contract was awarded, commercial crew program, everybody was like, Boeing is the safe choice. Why you are, uh, you know, awarding it to Dragon also? Safety. This survived, this did not. It happens. So is the easiest way to achieve low cost and multiple redundant power. That is crucial. They must have multiple options. They cannot be in a situation where whole nation is dependent on one aspect. That should not happen. SpaceX was a great spin-off. Now they want other to become something successful like this. Other private companies to become successful. So that's the reality behind it. So what about the R&D that was done on this suit? All, all the R&D, all the knowledge that they have gained from building Mark uh, II suits that was used in uh, basically ISS era and uh, Artemis generational space suit development that was supposed to be used for Artemis. Uh, all the data will be transferred to all the private company that want to develop this. And the uh, idea behind is that they can even take test articles, meaning this is classified as test article. They can take it and they're like, oh, this is how you are covering the you know main hip joint. That is very crucial because you have to understand the suit has to be ludicrously light because moon is brutal. and war time is like you know brute forcing if we are men we're gonna brute force it that's good and all but if if you want to do extended mission that's just not acceptable in extended mission scenario your suit should not be harmful to you and uh, that is very extensive very complex very hard to do so private company will get a jump starting point utilizing this because they have learned a lot from mark II, and the shoulders are that's why you will notice the shoulder joints are built differently they learned it the hard way the shoulders must be comfortable otherwise you will fatigue the astronaut so all the data basically a company can use the test articles and all the data that has been generated trying to build these things and nasa will be like okay take it study it all the data and we will tell you what to do be mindful uh, nasa will be very strict about what exactly do we want we want like for example a human body in like you know very low state will generate around 100 watts of heat if you are working so like serious hardcore workout you can go almost like 500 watts of heat so they will be like hey must be able to withstand like 600 watt of continuous heat for a few hours that will be the what. Now, how? That's different. At this point in time, they will be like, go YOLO on it. They will tell what we want, not how. How, it's up to you. They have learned it the hard way. The best thing is to let private companies solve it out. We know what exactly we have to do. That's what we have learned from building all these things. Like, this is what we want. Can you do it better? Do it. If you not, do our own system. So that's the whole point. The approach is very clear about this. We're going to give you spec sheets. This is what we want. How do you achieve it? That's up to you. We're going to test the hell out of it. But how you achieve it, that's up to you. And that's another aspect of it. Having two companies should give them multiple option meaning there will be like you know one company is using evaporative cooling another company is using let's say uh, some sort of solid phase change cooling Very interesting things could happen so that's the whole point of r d and multiple path options so there are winners and this is supposed to be now be very mindful this is very early on and money budget and all that they do scale up uh, so 3.5 billion supposed to be awarded or all tasks under this award 3.5 billion so it's expensive uh, Project name is Ludicrous. It's a uh, Exploration Extra Vehicular Activity Services. X E V A S. Don't ask me who can name this. Uh, and this is from Axiom Space is the first winner. Sex second winner is Colon Aerospace. Now be mindful, both of these companies are in a position where if they develop the suit on their own, they still would have done it. For example, Axiom Space wants to have their own space station. They are working towards it. So they need space suit one way or the another, sooner or later. So they were already working on it. And this is the perfect scenario. This is what we want, what we call collaborative efforts, meaning both will help each other. You know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. So NASA gets a suit, uh, like, you know, expedited suit development with a private efficiency and uh, a private company gets a lot of extra cash to expedite the process. Everybody wins. Same goes for Colin Aerospace. Now, Colin Aerospace, I, it's very hard to figure out like what kind of people are working because this company is very old but has been resold multiple times. So I cannot pinpoint exactly, but apparently they are the people who worked with the Mark One Apollo suit. So they know their stuff, and not to mention they are a very big name in aerospace. So they are the people who know their stuff. So a lot of the details still need to be worked out. We may be mindful. NASA is very hands off on this. They're like, we want this. How do you do it? That's up to you. And we're going to test the hell out of it. There is no other interference anymore. So a lot of detail has to be. And the targeted date is 2024 orbital test. That's the you know ideal scenario. Let's see. It could even be earlier than this. Or it may even drag on later. But let's see what happens about this. That's why you will only see CG reports right now. Because there is even if there is a test article that is built behind closed door, they will not expose this right now. It will take its time. They will sort out all the details. And then we're going to get the final results. 
So the first thing you will think about, what about SpaceX? Well, SpaceX is developing their own space suit. They have to do it because they are the only company right now who has the rocket, who has a capsule, and they have the intervehicular suit, meaning they are missing only one component. If they add the space suit, they can do complete space protocols on their own, in-house, completely. So there are generally three marks uh, that people have to achieve. First, intervehicular suit, like this one. They have completed, that's awesome, good, nice. Then there is tether suit. Now, tether suit, uh, you may be like, oh, isn't that very old technology, like 1970s technology? Yes, it is. But the reason why tether suit is like, it's very easy to make. Comparatively to making a backpack, this is much easier. And there is a limitation of a dragon hole, basically. Uh, dragon capsule has a docking, and docking ring. That docking ring is very limited, so meaning, they can either send the basically backpack through, then send the astronaut through, or they have to like, you know, have just the tether because it's just not big enough. So that's a serious issue they have to deal with. So independent back suit, if they want to develop it, it has to be much smaller compared to NASA's current active uh, systems. So that's one thing. So tether system is their current priority. And again, if you've sorted the tether system, at least you have sorted the person aspect of it. Meaning what person is gonna wear, how it's gonna deal with it, how the joints, all that, all that can be sorted. So that is still a good, uh, you know, achievement. If you can sort that, hey, if we got the suit part, you can literally contract other companies like, hey, can you build the backpack? Or again they were like you know let's focus on the main part because this is the part that hurts the astronaut this is the part that has to be good otherwise astronauts get tired a lot so let's sort this part out it has to survive actual outside space if they sort that part out majority of the work will be done so that will be tested on november 2022 meaning at the end of this year so after that there are some uh, drawings going around but i would not trust them because they are way too small they are like like this small like you know college or school i don't think you can have at least long-term survivability, meaning you'd think at least six hours of uh, survivability should be there. So I'm reasonably sure you can't have six hours survivability in this one. Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe some new technologies and all that jazz, but let's see. And if things go well, they could partner up. If they sort this part out and they start to develop their backpack and if NASA is like, hey, both those uh, service provider are not up to the speed or they have emergency, for example, uh, ISS needs actual, uh, you know, repair outside. They have a fail safe option of going to Russian suit, which they really don't like. But again, that's still a more uh, tried, tested method. It's not as comfortable as the ISS one, but what else you want to do? But if this happens, like uh, there is a, urgent need and SpaceX has completed the you know final development meaning Mark 3 development of the suits uh, there could be a partnership so do not put the partnership out of the table right now it's not there and again as a company as a country you do not want that also you want there to be other company other than SpaceX you do not want to be like this company or everything else is zero you never want that not for a country for that company that's awesome <laughs> but for everybody else it's like dude that's not good that's monopoly so let's see what happens with SpaceX because November is not very far away. So I'll see you again in November or next Monday. So this was my presentation on NASA's current procurement of, uh, you know, dealing with spacesuit issues. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.